So, welcome everybody to the third lecture of Digital Communication Systems. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about time division multiplexing. So, but before we talk about time division multiplexing in, in general, which is abbreviated as TDM, and sometimes we call it TDMA, time division multiple axis, I just would like to remind you with the sampling theory, what, it's, what it, it states, and what's the importance of it, and how is it related to time division multiplexing. The sampling theory basically states that if you are given a message signal which is analog, and this signal is donated by M of T, this message signal can be transmitted as a sequence of samples of MNTS. And you sample this message signal at a frequency FS, which is equal to 2 FM, double the maximum frequency spectrum of the message signal. Yes? So, what FS then? The sampling frequency in the sampling theorem is equal to 2 to FM, where FM is the maximum frequency, spe maximum frequency spectrum component in the message signal. Now, to reconstruct your signal without any interference, you need to have a sampling frequency at least equal to 2 FM, and it's preferred to be greater than 2 FM. Now, you sample your signal, as you can see, at each TS, you take just one sample from the signal. At TS1, you take one sample. At TS2, you take a, a time equal to uh, two TS, you take another sample. Three TS, you take third sample, and so on and so forth. What can you see from this figure? And the resulting sampling frequency will look like something like pulse amplitude modulation here. Since the switch has duration, the switch cannot be delta, it takes some time due to the capacitor and this. That's why we have some width for the pulse. And this, the top of this pulse takes the shape of the message signal. So the pulse amplitude modulation signal then looks like this. What do you notice here? You notice that there are some empty spaces like here between the first pulse and second pulse, between the second and third, and these are empty time durations, which are not utilized for communication. So one can think, why don't we utilize these time duration to send maybe more data, or to send the message of another user? Of, of course, this is a message corresponding to user number one. What if we have another user, user number two? Cannot we utilize these empty time durations to send other user signals? Of course we can. This is the basic principle of time division multiplexing. To take different, to take the samples of different signals corresponding to different users and multiplex them in the, spa in the du time duration between the consecutive pulses. So, now, th this sampling theory leaves space for other samples to be interleaved in the same sampling interval. For example, this is, as I, as I just mentioned, I said this is user 1 signal, and we sampled it. This is, this is the first sample of user 1 signal. This is the second sample, and this is the third sample, and this is the fourth sample, fifth, and so on. Yes, this is, these are the samples of the first user signal. Now, there is another user who has another, another message signal and wants to send this message over the same communication channel line. So, the second user signal is, looks like this, and after sampling, just takes the following sample, one, two, three, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on and so forth. Now, as you can see, in the duration from, in the duration from 0 to TS, I was able to put the sample of the second user in between the two samples of the first user. 
the, the, this sample and this sample, they belong to the first user signal. In between them, I, there is enough space to put a sample corresponding to the second data user, which is here. I put it here. I utilize this time. As you can see, I still have enough spacing here where I can add another pulse, another sample for another third user, which utilize in this way, you utilize your channel more efficiently. You use all the time slots for communication. You don't waste any of them. Because this is, at the end of the day, it's cable. And cable has limited bandwidth, limited resources. And this DS is somehow corresponding to the bandwidth of the channel, or the maximum data rate you can transfer. So this is basically what's time division multiplexing. Basically, you have different messages. You coming from different users, user 1, user 2, user 3, and so on. And you have commuter, which is multiplexing switch. And the frequency that it works at it, we call it the multiplexing frequency, or commuter multiplexing frequency. Basically, this, is, this takes sample from the first user signal, and takes another, the second sample takes it from the second user signal, third sample takes it from the third user signal, and so on and so forth, until it puts all the, the samples of the users on the line. Then again, repeats, take another sample for the first user, another sample for the second, another sample for the third, and so on. So at the end, it multiplexes all the signals here at the channel line. And then there is another switch at the receiver. We call it decommute, decommutator, which works at the same frequency that this switch works at. And again, you have low pass filter here. And the message signal, you pick the message signal corresponding to each user. Let's, for example, give an example. Let's say this is the first message signal. And here you have, uh, th this is sign. And let's say this has rate. And this has triangle. So the first sample here, let's say it, at TS, it's this. And the second sample, you sample it like this with TS, TS frequency. TS is equal to three, F, uh, uh, FS equal to two FM or greater. So this, we call it the sampling frequency, which is different than the multiplexing frequency the commutator frequency. And the same here, the, this user has uh, is uh, also has, has a different sampling frequency and has different samples. Let's say this is the first sample and second sample. And this user has the, uh, three another uh, different samples at different times. So at, at the line here, you, you look at the message signal of the first user, this, and you put it on the line. You and then you take the, the first sample of the second user data and put it on the line. It can be different or whatever. And this user, the first sample of this user, you put it on the line. And again, you repeat the same process again. You take the second sample from here and put it here. The second sample from here and put it here. The, third, the second sample from here and put it here. Whatever the shape of the sample, I'm ju just giving an example, a random example. But this can apply to anything. Then you use pulse modulator, communication channel, and pulse demodulator. And you have another switch at the front, at the receiver side, where you can uh, pick exactly. So, uh, this switch is synchronized perfectly with the switch at the transmitter and just redistribute the message signals to the corresponding users. So this is the basic concepts. The commutator switch takes samples from each input signal and interleave them on the channel line. This is the basic functionality of the multiplexing switch, we will call it.
or commutator. The operating frequency of the commutator switch is given by this is the formula of the operating frequency. It's n multiplied by fs, where n, what's n? n is the number of messages that the users have. For example, you have 10 users with 10 messages. You have n equal to 10. And fs, this is users. fs is equal to 2fm of the maximum frequency component of, among all the messages. Suppose you have 10 messages and the first message, uh, to simplify the example, suppose you have 3 messages and the first message has 2 megahertz, the second has a 3, the third has 5. So fs is derived based on the maximum frequency component, which is 5. So fs is 2 multiplied by 5. And then you multiply by n, which is in this case 3. You get the multiplexing frequency, the commutator frequency, fm. Where fs is 2fm is the sampling frequency for each signal, provided that all n signals have the same bandwidth. In the case all signals they have the same bandwidth, then you take any signal with any bandwidth and just say fs equal to 2fm, and then you multiply by the number of messages. So, if the N signals have different bandwidth, as I just explained, then FS is selected as the sampling frequency of the signal with the highest frequency content. This is the example that I just explained to you a few seconds ago. If signals with different bandwidths are to be TDM multiplexed, then the signal signals with same bandwidths are grouped together and sampled on the same FS. Suppose you have three, three signals, uh, that they have the same FM and another three th signals with different FM then you group the signals which have the same frequency and uh, the other signals which have the same frequency and after that you do the multiplexing according to the maximum frequency among these groups so let's take an example to understand this concept more deeply Two signals are to be transmitted using pulse amplitude modulation TDM. The first signal has a bandwidth of 0 to 8 kilohertz signal. The second signal bandwidth is from 0 to 10 kilohertz. The two signals are sampled equally. This means that the sampling frequency is the same for both, in spite of the fact that they have different bandwidths. The sampled signals are passed through a low-pass filter before transmission. So this is what we have. We have two signals. One signal has maximum frequency component 8, and the other has maximum frequency of 10. And you want to multiplex them. And both of them, they are sampled at the same FS. What the question is, what's the minimum clock frequency of the pulse amplitude system? commutator clock or multiplexing frequency in other words which is Fn the second part of the question what's the minimum cutoff frequency of the low pass filter used before transmission that will preserve the amplitude information in the output on the output pulses what's the bandwidth of that filter that should come after the after Fn the third question what would be the minimum bandwidth if these two signals were frequency multiplex using normal AM techniques and single sideband technique from the course of introduction to communication? You can solve this. So let's go one by one. Here, what's the, what's the minimum clock frequency? The minimum clock frequency Fn is equal, we know that it's, this is the formula of the term. N multiplied by FS. What's N? N number of users, number of messages we want to multiplex. How many messages we have? 2, 1 of 8 
one of eight kilohertz and the other of ten. So we have two multiplied by two FM. Now which FM we should take into account? We have two messages with two different FMs. The first one eight, the second one ten. Which one we should put in the equation? The maximum one. The maximum. We put ten so that we avoid interference or overlapping or inter interleaving between the two pulses. So this becomes 2 multiplied by 2, 4 multiplied by 10 kilohertz, which is equal to 40 kilohertz. This is what? This is the multiplexing frequency or the commutator clock. Done, clear, understood, not difficult, you just need to understand the meaning, how many messages, what's the bandwidth of each message. Now the second part, what's the minimum cutoff frequency of the low pass filter used before transmission that will preserve the amplitude information on the output pulses? You have filter after you multiplex this, you have filter to pass them. How do you know the filter? You need to know the bandwidth of the multiplex sequence. Now you have one sample from the first message and another sample from the second message. The third sample from the first and fourth sample from the second. What's the distance between two consecutive samples? Yes, Tn. Tn, after multiplexing on the line, you are multiplexing different user signal. Tn, what's Tn? 1 over Fn. And what's Fn? 1 over this, 40 kilohertz. So this is Tn. What's the bandwidth of the signal? the bandwidth of the double side band filter, Tn, should be 1 over Tn. 1 over Tn multiplied by half, because the signal in base band, half of it in the positive, half of half on the, on the negative. So you take half of it. So the bandwidth of the filter, bandwidth, is equal to half Fn. 1 over Tn, which is 20 kilohertz. You understand why it's... Well, because the signal at the beginning here, it's like this. Here, the positive, here, the negative. So if a signal, if I say the bandwidth of the signal is 10 megahertz, this means 10 in, 10 in the positive, 10 in the negative. When you modulate it, for example, and go to the higher carrier, the bandwidth becomes 2 times, two, 2 multiplied by 10. So here, the, the filter, since it's low pass filter, it's in the base band, not pass band. So it's just on one side of the signal. That's why it's 20, not 40. Here is the answer. This is the first question. We found it 40, which is true, and this is, the bandwidth is equal to Fn over 2. Fn, we already found it 40, over 2 becomes 20, single side. Now, the third question, which is, what would be the minimum bandwidth if these two signals were frequency multiplexed using normal AM techniques and single side band? Let's say single side band or double side band. You have the first message, let's say this is the first message, has the bandwidth 8 kilohertz. And the second message, the bandwidth how much? Let's say it's different message and the bandwidth is 10. Yes? And assume you are using single sideband. Single sideband. Of course there is like this, because this is, I told you, symmetry. 8 here, 8 here. 
yes, in the base band. So after you go a single side band, what do you do? You multiply by carrier. Yes, and the carrier shifts it to the high frequency. You remember from introduction to communicator. So you would have one message here. Yes, and another message here. And since it's single side band, you take only the, either the upper part or lower part. Let's say you took the upper part. How much is this? Eight. You take only one side. Eight. And for this message, you get the same here. Here you have on the left and you have on the right. And since it's single side, you take the upper part only. And what's this? 10. The bandwidth of the message, the bandwidth of the modulated carrier is not 10. It's 10 plus 10, 20. But since I'm using single side band, I take half of the message, so it remains 10. So, now I want to send them over one line, one line, together. What do I do? I just put the frequency of this on the line. This part, I put it on the, in the frequency. This is frequency. And then I put the second message on the line. This is the shape of the second message, yes? So what, what's this, the duration of this? Eight. What's the duration of this? 10. What's the summation? 18 kilohertz. 18 kilohertz, this is what I need to transmit my two signals using frequency division multiplexing. Now this is using single sideband. What if I use double sideband? You need to multiply this by two. Why? Because you take also this part, you remember? You take this part, and you take this part, and this part becomes 16, and this part becomes 20. 20 plus 16, 36 kilohertz. Clear? Frequency multiplexing, multiplexing in frequency domain. Adjacent to, you will take the signal in the frequency domain and you put them back to back. Time multiplexing, you put the samples of the signal consecutive to each other. This is used in FM, in uh, LTE as well, in Wi-Fi we use these. In Wi-Fi, how many channels the uh, access point has? How many channels like uh, for 11 or 14 sometimes? Yes? Like this. You usually use only one channel. And if there is collision, you need to choose another channel. If there is interference, randomly you choose it. Yes, this is, the Wi-Fi has bad quality compared to cellular because you randomly keep trying until you get successfully connected. That your connection with Wi-Fi is not always 100% guaranteed. Yes? So, so this is the the example we saw the the part part three of the question. This is using single side band. How I explained to you the answer how I obtained this, and this is using double side band. I explained to you how we got it, it and also there is. A, other way of interpreting this, I wrote it in the slides, you can go over it and check it and understand it. But uh, the most important thing that you understand the drawing that I made and how I figured out the numbers and put them in the equation. So is this understood? Is this clear? I don't think it's difficult. Now let's take another example, a little bit more difficult than the previous one. This is directly from the book. You can, I assume that you go to the book and you check some of the examples and maybe you solve some of them at home to check your understanding and you are competent in this domain. So, 
The example says the question, we have 24 voice signals. And these are sampled uniformly and then time division multiplex on the transmission line that you want. The sampling operation uses flat top samples with one microsecond duration. The, sample, the sampler uses one microsecond one microsecond switch. This produces the pulse. The multiplexing operation includes provision for synchronization by adding an extra pulse of sufficient amplitude and also one microsecond duration. So not only we have 24 voice signal, we have another signal that's used for synchronization. Then the total number of signals we have, how many? 25, not 24. Because one of them is used for synchronization, the question says. The highest frequency component of each voice signal is... How much is the frequency component of each message signal? 3.4, which is your voice. 3.4 kilohertz. Now, the question says, assuming a sampling rate of 8 kilohertz for each message signal, since each message is basically voice and we sampled it at 8 kilohertz, calculate the spacing between successive pulses of the multiplex signal. Yes? In time division multiplexing, I told you, you take the first sample from the first message. Let's say you, these are the, you have, this is the first signal.